Hey everyone, my name's Hunter and welcome to another Hancock Holiday video. This is one of the last videos or maybe the last video of our orchard series. So tonight I've got all the family members in my family who are on island coming over tonight and we are going to be taking trees from the garden on the other side of the house here and we're planting it in here. So hope you enjoyed following along with a bit of this project and hopefully you enjoy this last video. All right, behind me is about 1,400 pounds of lawn and garden soil mix. And what I'm gonna be doing with this is putting it in wheelbarrows, mixing in all my organic fertilizers and as well as the worm castings, making a good mix, digging a hole where the fruit trees are gonna be going and then burying them in that spot with all that nice good soil amongst the wood chips we put in there as well as the well draining soil on the top. Once that's all done, we'll put new wood chips across the whole thing once the irrigation lines are in and then we'll be pretty set to go. But got a lot of dirt to move. And these are the trees we're going to be planting right here behind me. We've got avocado tree, we've got a Valencia orange tree, a Pokini Kini, which is a native flowering plant here. We've also got a bunch of banana starts right over there we're going to be putting in. And then we're going to still get a lemon tree donated by my brother tomorrow. He's going to bring it out. So we've got probably a good five to ten trees we're going to be putting in, and it should be pretty fun. And hopefully, not too long, we'll have trees that are about this size getting pretty close, giving us some fruit. Is that all the fertilizer? Yeah, so this is a mix of fertilizer of some perlite, green sand, azomite, kelp meal, and bone meal. All of which are supposed to help with better irrigation, better aeration, and providing more nutrients and trace minerals for the roots to absorb, for them to break down, feed the microorganisms in the soil. And I'm mixing it into a soil mix of screen soil, compost, um, and a little bit of some other organic fertilizer in the soil too, I think. Yeah, I've got four out here. I love trees. I love trees. I love avocado. I love avocado. I love lime. I love lime. I love poor kenny kenny. I love poor kenny kenny. I love banana. I love banana. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Probably good. Alright, well that was pretty special. Hope you got to see all that. We have now planted all the trees down to the end. Got one little lemon tree and some pie trees to put in, but that's pretty much it. Every sibling got to kind of put their hand in it, and uh, my older brother will come and do the lemon tree tomorrow. So we're gonna get the irrigation lines in a day or two, lay those down, and then after that, we're gonna put the wood chips on top. So we'll be pretty much done with this project. All right, it's another windy one, and it's about two days later from putting all those fruit trees in behind me. And so far, I've got the timer and what it's gonna connect to into my into my thousand feet of hosing. And I'm definitely not going to need that much, but I got the cheap big bulk order um, and I'll probably use it around other parts of my garden. But we're going to do a loop down and then back up on each side of the tree. So if the trees are like this in a line, they're going to have irrigation lines on each side with drippers. Um, so the project for today is to go and dig a trench to put a new spigot in that will be closer to where the fruit trees are so we can get all that water set up on one time or one spot and kind of have a designated area for the water for this whole orchard. So go show you where that's at. So the plan is to dig a trench from about there, hopefully a straight line to about right there. And then I'll have a little spigot that pop up. Hose will go all the way down there, loop back up and terminate right about here.
It's the one I was the most worried about. No leaks there. No leakage. We're good. There it is. All right, it's like 7.30 now, and I just got the designated water line right here. Got burnt my finger, so holding that. Got that line, and the line goes all the way over to there, right there, and it's stubbed up. So now I've got a designated um, spigot so I can run my water line tomorrow. So it's right there, right there. And no leaks, which is great. We are electricians, not plumbers, but it usually takes us a couple times, but we got it the first time this time, and uh, pretty stoked on that. So tomorrow we'll run lines, spigot's ready. All right, it's the next day now, and we have this spigot right here, which is the main thing I need to get set up um, plumbing-wise in preparation for us to do all the irrigation lines. But it's all wobbly right here, so I'm gonna take this channel strut and drive it in about three to four feet deep Put a piece of two by four against that and then screw it on and then we'll have stability here. And then after that, I can run my lines. So stick around, do a lot of hammering. Just got that in right there. You can see I've got the piece of wood behind it now. Now it's time to roll all this stuff out down that entire path there. So I'm gonna go down and then back up. And I'll be able to put little drippers on each side which will drop about a gallon of water per every half hour or so. Gonna go line that all up and unravel it. You can watch in time lapse. Okay, and then this is what needs PVC glue, I think. These two things, so this one will go into here, and that one will go into there. What about the two ends of the hose? Well, the hose just gets jammed into Just one? One end. And the other gets... I'm gonna cut it and then roll it and then put a um, zip tie on the end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like these little sprinklers that just they like spread out the water. Okay. And that's what that Yeah, it's gonna go in there. Another picture oh. of the I guess you could put zip ties around this, probably will, but this is supposed to just... Yep, that's it, for up to the top, so that's about the fit, and then we'll run it down. I'm gonna put the pegs along the side, but what I'm doing is just taking this, going right here near the, uh, the tree, taking these little drippers, which drip about two gallons per hour, and pushing it in and I'm gonna do that on each side and go all the way down stake it in with these stakes and then after that we can cover it with wood chips so uh, I got a lot to do okay right, it's a tight fit got the water running now and it's coming out in all these spots here as you can kind of see and we're gonna plant some kala plants right there there and there and then in between the rest of them will be papayas once these plants are in then uh, we'll wait till tomorrow another evening and uh, put the wood chips over it all okay when the arborist came this was our initial plan this is all we had here so from the gate up to the gas tank and the little gate through there all the trees that we planned out so now we can officially, it's, not even it's been on there for so long it needs to be erased. Now we just have to wait for them to grow. All right, this is the plan. I'm gonna load up the um, wood chips into this wheelbarrow. I'm gonna attach the wheelbarrow with that little <laughs> bungee right there and put it on the back of my golf cart. See if I can drive it up and around the area where we're gonna be doing all the dumping. Um, maybe just the top ones. I have to go up the hill and then do little dumps there. See if it's uh, too slow or if it's helpful for my back or legs or just not getting tired in general. But here we go, let's try it out.
All right, well, that was definitely more fun. I don't know if it's faster, but uh, we'll do a couple more of those and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit. I'm not sure how much you can see, but we got some of it laid out. I've got piles all the way to the end, but as you can see, the sun is set and it's pretty dark and uh, it's dinner time. So tomorrow morning, we'll get to the rest of this and uh, spread out all the rest of these piles. <sighs> Long day, but it's looking a lot better with the last stage. So tomorrow will definitely be the last bit of this video. We'll get these things all spread out and uh, maybe just do one final walkthrough of what we got, the full lineup. Thanks for watching. Yesterday was the 4th of July, so we've got a little bit of confetti over here in the orchard, but it is done. This is the last part of the video. I've got the irrigation line set up right here, and I gotta get a timer on it still. It's kind of still being a little bit funky with me, but I'm gonna get it figured out. And I have got all the trees in, so let me just give you the final walkthrough of the trees that are in, what we planted, and maybe why. And I appreciate you guys following along. It's very exciting to see it all in. It's just gonna get more and more pretty from here on out. All right, so first tree is an avocado tree. It's the San Miguel variety. It should be small, very tasty to eat, and uh, it should be easy to manage as well. Looks like it needs a little bit more water. It's kind of struggling, but avocado trees kind of have a little bit of a struggle throughout their process of um, getting brought into a new space. So keep an eye on that one. That's kind of the main, my main one of concern here. After that, we have in between each major tree, we have a middle section, which has our callo plants. Some little callos right there. You see the little leaves. They'll do well. We've got lots of other little ones we can put in there if it doesn't survive, but I think it'll be all right. And then on each side of that, we have comfrey. Our next tree is the fig tree. And I'm not entirely sure that variety, but I'll figure that out probably as time goes on. I know that's a good one that does well here in Hawaii. It was one that was bred um, by the University of Hawaii as one of the top fig trees to produce in Hawaii. So I know at least it's a very good variety. We got comfrey again, Kahlo, comfrey, and then we have our very first citrus tree, which is kind of what this orchard was originally planned around. And this is our Mexican thornless lime. Um, it's a great variety and uh, it's not too hard to manage. And then we have our second citrus tree, which is a lemon tree. Next, we have a hibiscus, which I want to put up a little picture of the hibiscus. Um, oh, here it is right here. So it is that beautiful hibiscus really really pretty and then we have our valencia orange tree which seems to be doing pretty good right here so got caterpillar no thank you and we have a pool kinny kinny which is a hawaiian flower um, that smells really beautiful that's kind of the end of the bud after the flowers falling off and the papaya tree nice and small and then we have apple banana trees that go all the way down so apple banana apple banana there's a little one right there and then two more and in between those are all comfrey and papaya and then we've got another hibiscus tree that looks like that well i guess it's a bush technically really beautiful hibiscus any last words you want to tell the people i think she's excited to see it in this way too really appreciate you following along in this little journey of our orchard project we have here if you have any any tips or advice that we you could share about any of these plants, these trees, ways to manage an orchard, please let me know. Um, I'll be doing fertilizer probably every two to three months and just trying to keep a good eye on these. These are my new babies for now. So I uh, appreciate you guys all tuning in and any of the comments that you share in the future. Thanks. Bye.